Hello, welcome to a special edition of the Richmond Big Footy Tiger Cast. It's that time of year when we're getting towards the, the point in of the fixture. Finals are upon us, which also means the trade period's coming up as well. And there's only one man to get in to talk about possible trades coming up for this year, and that's Tiger71. How are you, mate? Good, mate. Yeah, good. Yeah, thanks for the um, having me on again. No dramas at all. Always a pleasure. I mean, everyone's been hanging out for it. We're getting pestered in the thread, so... Uh, no, it's, it's been an, an interesting season, I, I suppose, in terms of football. But uh, So we'll get your thoughts on that first. What are your general thoughts on the season so far? We're sitting first, uh, looking to lock up a top two spot this week. Is it how you thought it was going to be at the start of the year? Actually, yeah. Um, how we um, played after that St Kilda game and the momentum that we had and we carried through the finals, I was pretty confident that we'll... Um, I didn't think we'll finish first, but I was confident that we'll be in the top four. Um and, yeah, they're, they're going according to script. I like the fact that we haven't really at any of our games had to pull out our best pressure game um, like we did in finals. It looks like we're sort of just working our way up to the form level that we need to be. So, um, fingers crossed, we have a good one and get in the big dance again. Absolutely. And there's been a little bit of, I suppose, speculation that we may have had a, an increased training load over the last few weeks and whatnot. So it will be in- interesting to see if we really hit form come finals time. Um, this game coming up on the weekend, we've got the Gold Coast Suns, who are sitting 17th. Does it appear as easy as it seems on paper, or is it a game we reckon we should be cautious of? You know when they say um, no AFL game's easy? Um, well, they lie. This one's just going to be a walk in the park. Like, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> I don't want to sound too over cocky, but, um, mate, look, we could breast most of our midfield um, and we'll smack them by 10 goals. They're shit at the moment. Sorry, guys. They're um they're playing with zero spirit. If if Melbourne can beat them by a hundred points or near that, um, Carlton can beat them. Um, I don't know. I hope um they light a few candles at a few cathedrals because they're gonna need they're gonna need all the you know um, spiritual support they can get because, mate. I think by second quarter, a few of their players will be seeing God. That's how bad I think it's gonna get. Yeah, I said last night that I reckon they might be pretty fired up for the first quarter, being at home and they want a bit of retribution after their poor effort last week, but I don't think it'll last much longer than that. No. Uh, and sitting sitting first in the ladder, just jumping back to that quickly, do you reckon there's added pressure on the boys come finals time, similar to what maybe Adelaide possibly felt? No, I reckon we would have felt the pressure of not having the um, letdown. That would, would have been the most focus this year. I, I don't think um, finals are going to worry them. I reckon they're going to go. Um, they've got nothing to lose. People think, oh, well, you back to back, the flag is all to lose. But because we've had the uh, history that we've had, they dominated last final series. They've got the big monkey off the back. Um, keep on doing what works, mate. Just play to have fun. Um, and all that all the other stuff looks after itself. So, now, I, I really expect us to um, power along. One thing I do want to say, though, that um, it's sort of has gotten a bit of comment on the media, but it's been snickered at and nothing's really been, um, uh, you know, given really good thoughts about it. But I cannot understand... Well, I hope our club is doing something about this, but we're negative 99 on the free kick count. Now, to give you a, just a – to um, give this some um, uh, a scope how rare this is, in the whole life of champion data, or well, since records have been kept, no AFL side has been so negative in the um, free kick count. It's – no one's had such a bad ratio as us. Um, we've literally nearly got 50 more – then the second worst, which is Essendon. And the game Friday summed it up for me that I think – I don't think it's intentional um, bullshit or corruption. I'm not I'm not going to wear a tinfoil hat. But there's something – I don't know if the umpires just don't like us or the umpires in their back – in their subconscious, I mean. You know, like maybe there's, there's a stigma that we're still working through um, – because Dangerfield was dead set throwing the ball. He threw it three or four times. I watched a replay a couple of times. Um, and I caught count down four times. He actually flew it. It got that bad that um, there was one contest on the wing. Higgins actually, who was on him, um, actually waved his hands in the air like, umpire, don't tell me you didn't see that. And yeah. the umpire ignored it. And they got a goal from it. it he's getting ridiculous now how bad it is. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, I mean, it's common talk on our board, I guess, and, the, the funny thing is, though, if you go to the main board or talk to a lot of other uh, non Richmond <laughs> supporters, for some reason, just because we're sitting first, they actually honestly have the opinion that we get the rub at the green and we're getting the better end of the stick from the umpires. But, um, yeah, that, that difference is massive. So we can all uh, raise a glass when we crack the 100 differential this weekend, no doubt. 
Yeah, it's just look on the main board. Like, let's. I'm going to have a bit of a whinge here. The main board is just a cesspool of shit. Let's be honest. It's um an anti tiger agenda being driven on the board. You've got uh, moderate admin mods on there that um, dead set have an agenda against certain Richmond posters. I'm one of them. Um, you've got one knobhead who likes to slag us off, generalise us, move threads, cancel threads, um, delete threads. Um, and then give excuses that it's um, oh, you, all you tigers are all the same. You could only have one thread, and you can pump your own tires up. Whereas um, the one that really struck me when um, one of our one board members was proud of the hundred thousand put up on the um, the main board. Richmond hit a hundred k, and before you could blink, within three pages, it got moved to the industry section. But if you have a look, and when G, uh, GWS hit 25K members, and someone from GWS, one of their 14 members, put up that thread, it's still there. It did not get moved. It's exactly the time, same type of context. Did not get put in the industry board. Um, it's just, I rarely go on the main board now. They're just, um, look, while Carlton admins run it, um, and, they, and they're not professional enough to leave their jumpers um, at home, um, yeah, I, I just go on Big Footy now just for the Richmond board. That's it. Um, yep. no, that's fair enough. The Richmond board is the place to be. Yep. Speaking Sorry of the if Richmond that causes board. you. Hopefully that, um, you know, I know you're Big Footy. Um, ho- hopefully it doesn't piss anyone off in Big Footy. It probably does. And if you want to delete it, delete it. Um, no, no, we're right. Yeah. Um, I didn't really use is. any names. I no, didn't exactly. use any names. That, that's I could the only have, thing mate. I, I could have. <laughs> trust me, I could have used the names. Oh, I could have. But uh, speaking of the Richmond board, uh, you and yep. I mainly mainly you. I'm I'm just a, a speaker really. We're, we're under the pump. The boys are putting the heat on us to come up with some some trade podcasts. So we better get stuck into that before they start <laughs> right. sending us abusive messages. You're right. Let's talk about Lynch, eh? That's oh, what we'll, people want to hear. No, we'll leave him till last. We'll keep people okay. hanging. We'll keep we'll keep yep. him. The first one we got through was actually from another poster who asked not to be named, which is fine. He inboxed the two of us. Yep. Um, about Callum Moore, uh, who has yep. apparently been spoken to by North Melbourne, and there's speculation that there's been offers of around four hundred <laughs> to five hundred thousand, which it seems like we're not willing to match. And then you sort of come back a few days later and said, "Yeah, that that um, lines up to what you've heard as well." Is there anything else on the Callum Moore situation? Yeah, I heard. Um, I heard that four hundred to five hundred k, and and with the club being North Melbourne, so I asked a few of my mates, um, not the main one that I, that gave me all the Lynch in focus with him. Um, I don't. I don't like pressing. Um, I only use him um, when I really, really need confirmation or something. So while it's still early days, I asked a few that would know. Um, and yeah, there's there's talk about um, Calamore, not just from um, North Melbourne, but just from, from a few clubs. Sydney being one of them, um, which surprised me a little bit. So Sydney here yeah, is definitely asking the question of him. Um, look, he's he's rated. I, I don't think he's hunted yet. Um, I think um, questions have been asked about him if he's doesn't get. Um, uh, uh, like a three-year deal with us, he probably will. Um, he might walk. Oh, I don't want to say will. Um, he loves the club. But, yeah, definitely clubs are asking about him. Um, the main one, funny enough, outside of North Melbourne is Sydney um, that I heard a fair bit of. Um, and what another one that surprised me a little bit because he's in contract and I'm sure we're going to say no to. But um, And I'm proud of the guy because he deserves the credit that he needs to get. But Lambert, there's, if Lambert um, wants to put himself on the open market, you will have clubs offering him, you know, 600k in five-year deals. I can tell you that as a matter of fact. Um, I know, I know for a fact that Melbourne um, asked a question of him this year, um, and um, there's a few other clubs, but Melbourne's the one that I heard a lot of because uh, he's got that run and that dash that they need, and he can kick the ball. So, um, and we did really well keeping short. Um, I knew he was going to sign, like I sort of said on the post. Um, when he was going to re-sign, but um, yeah, uh, we've got to make sure we lock Lambert away, if not this year, next year, to a longer-term deal. With the Callum Moore one, is it is it too simplistic to say that if Lynch comes across that he's almost gone simply because he's going to want more opportunity? I love you said that. It's it's a complete misnomer. I've got a mate of mine that works in the footy industry, um, all a few of them. Um, what Lynch will do to our structure is enhance the forward line, not take it away from it. He's, Lynch's asset to us, his ability to burst packs and um, clunk a mark. Um, his, his tank is not bad, but it's not great. So he's going to be really just a presence deep in 50. See, where our weakness is, um, and Collingwood got a hold of us a little bit, um, our entries into the forward 50 are still too high. We, um, we, we 
bomb a lot of um, balls in from that 40 to 50 range and that 30 to 50 range. What we don't do normally is get the ball within the go- in the arc. I mean, sorry, in the goal square. Um, within that 10, if you do a, anything from a zero to a 15 meter arc, that's what Lynch is going to improve us on because he'll anchor himself there. Um, and then lead out from there. And if we can create more contests in that area, we're going to score more goals. So um, players like Callum Moore, he's got he's got an engine, he's got agility. Um, he he can slot on. I actually see him. I know there was a post someone put down. Can we use him as a prototype winger? I, funny enough, my personal opinion, um, would love the club to explore him as a back. Um, I'd love to see him in the back line. He's got good, his his hands aren't great. That's his only problem. He he, he he has a good mark and he's a lighter frame. Yeah, yes, obviously. But he's got that what most backmen really need and a lot of them lack is that initial burst of pace. It's explosive and I could see him um, playing in the back line. But look, um, having Lynch won't kick him out. Um, I don't think I think Townsend um, will stay on the list next year. Um, obviously, depending on his form going through to the end of the year, I don't think by getting Lynch in it means we have to jettison anyone. To be honest, um, <clears throat> it just allows us versatility. Um, we play a tall back line. We go small. We play a small back line. Then we can extend them by putting Jackets and a half forward, Lynch full forward, um, and then put Callamore in one pocket and then surround them by you know Rioli and Butler. Might mean Ken Stanza and Butler. One of those two will drop. I reckon that's what it's going to affect more than it is going to affect our tools. Um, yeah, which is interesting because it, uh, it, I mean, you would easily argue that our smalls have been our strong suit and have got us to where we are. So hopefully it doesn't affect that part of the game too much if Lynch is the one across. But um, it's going to create some interesting dynamics. I mean, I personally see Rewalt playing up the ground a bit more, kind of like what Richo yep. did because he's such a clever yep. footballer. His footy IQ is through the roof. So yep. we're not going to miss out in that sense. And if he's running back towards goal, that's going to cause his defenders a lot of headaches. Yeah, but I reckon it's our system that improves our smalls. It's not the smalls on their own. I reckon we could really inject anyone into that forward line. And because we run with that chaos, create a contest, create a spillage, crumb a goal, any medium to small could do that. Um, even more with his agility um, as he builds his frame and confidence could grow into that role as well. Um, so I reckon our system is what's um, creating our success, not necessarily our just our personnel. So, um, yeah, but look, with Jack, I'd love to see him at centre-half forward. He's the ideal. His, his footy IQ is through the roof. His kicking is so neat. Um, and getting him to be that, you know, chaos ball from the back half, grab that mark, and then he's got to know where to place the ball, you know, to create better effect. Um, and that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Now, there's been a bit of talk as well about the potential. A lot of people have mentioned Beams um, as a target they wouldn't mind getting. Is he someone that's maybe on our radar or any other type of midfielders or anything yeah. like that? Yeah, I mentioned that, I think, to you about three, four months ago. Um, what I know from all I've drilled down to, again, um, guys listening to this, this is still really early. Um, everything we're talking about here outside of Lynch um, is not as concrete um, because it's still all, um, it's a lot of noise at the moment, but, you know, I'm trying to fill in content um, for the show, but um, there was a big, big um, rumour going around about Beams, not just our club, but to a few clubs that he wanted to go back to Vic. Um, I did a big a di- bit of digging, um, heard back, yeah, there's something in it, and but where it seems to um, stem more from the manager, like Beams has told his manager to sound out clubs, not the other way around, because most of us just thought he was a lock for um, Brisbane. So I, re- I don't think he'll move this off-season, off se- off though there's a chance, but next off-season I think it's um, more than likely than unlikely that he will go. Um, the one I really want to nod on their head, because it's sometimes – I love this time of year because you see bullshit grow to being fact when it's still bloody bullshit. Collingwood is not getting May. Um, there's never been uh, anything concrete – that I've heard from that um, any official approaches from Collingwood, any officials approaches from May to Collingwood, that is going there this year, this off season, nothing, not happening. Um, it won't happen. Um, I, I, May is gettable, but um, and definitely gettable, but I doubt um, he'll be going this year to the Pies unless they throw a mega deal that they can't just um, you know. But I can't see that because the cap is completely stripped. But um, he'll. De- I don't think he'll be at Gold Coast next year. Um, Personally, but that I've got no fact to back it up. But yeah, the one thing I really want to get on is this May stuff. There's all bullshit rumor. There's no, nothing being factual from either camp that said, yeah, yeah, definitely May's considering an offer to move this year. I think Colin would love for it to happen now, um, considering how many injuries they've got and they need 
a defender like um, no man's business, but I doubt um, I doubt they could afford him to be honest with you either. So yeah, I just wanted to knock that on the head. That's that's one rumour that just started off as pub talk and it's just grown and grown and there's nothing in it. And speaking of Lynch, we, we, we will get to him now because that's the one that everyone's waiting to hear about. There's been a lot of uh, obviously media speculation and stories and uh, Buckley sort of throwing him under the bus and all that kind of stuff. Yep. All that kind of yep. stuff. Um, what's the, the absolute latest that you've heard about? Yep. Is Collingwood a legit chance? Have they made real offers? Is Hawthorne still a legit chance? How is it all yep. sort of sitting? Yeah, all right. Um, if like if guys just go back to that original post that um, it's the post that I wrote a bit about Lynch and um, also put down when Short was going to resign um, and all that sort of stuff. And it's it, it's a it, that will give you a bit of a background. But I'll just quickly go over that just quickly, but <clears throat> to get a bit of truth in here. Um, now, look, listen. I don't mind the pie supporters. You know, you can't get upset with someone with the brain matter of a frog. You know, it's not the frog's problem. It's acting like a prig. It's a frog. It doesn't realise it's acting like a pig. You know what I mean? So you just take the frog um, for what it is. It's a frog. So that's how I think of Collingwood supporters. You know, they're just frogs. Um, and Hawks. Let's let's be serious. Hawks' time in the sun is gone. Everyone knows their time in the sun is gone. Um, yes, they've got a great coach, an absolute amazing coach, but. Um, He's a bit of a nutter as well. Um, yeah, they're, and, they're not far outside the top four, though. They're going all right. No, but, yeah, but they're, yeah, no, they're, look, they're, they're an, look, people are still, see, I'm, I'm trying to be realistic here. They're, they've played really shit. When they came up against the good teams, they more often failed than they actually won. Um, they can bully the, the, the shitter teams, and Essendon shit. Our problem this year is, because the comp's so even, good teams, inverted commas, like Essendon and Melbourne, are considered really good teams, but they're actually really just bog average. Um, and how you can do that is, is rate their wins against really good quality opposition. Like, sorry, I don't, I'm going to get everyone offended at me. But Hawthorne, to me, have got a really, really soft underbelly. Um, bit of pressure on them, um, jump on them, and they will cave. Um, also, their list is a little bit – they've got nice, some good young kids, but some potatoes as well that are getting games because they've, they've not got that depth um, that they once had. So – Rioli leaving's hurt them. Um, they've got um, Paul Populo. He's another year older. Burgoyne's going there at, what, 40, 456 years of age. Um, yeah, so, but anyway, I'm sidetracking myself and my, sort of my barracking's coming out. But the reality is this. When, um, like I wrote on that post, Hawthorne wasn't even in the picture. Well, there was rumours about this, um, you know, Hawthorne, after Rioli had left, you know, oh, my God, they've realised they've got to go chase Lynch and all this sort of stuff. Um, what I know is this. Collingwood, um, everyone makes too much of about Lynch's relationship to Collingwood because of his dad. Eddie Maguire sponsors the Sorrento Football Club, so that means they must play together. Um, th- that's the most weakest reason I've ever heard. Um, perfect examples, look at Prestia. Um, his dad's a Cordia member for Melbourne, um, really heavily involved in the club, social events, um, does, you know, donations, all that sort of stuff, and pressures in um, a tiger, tiger man, and will be to the day he dies now. Um, so their family pool is not as great. And the way I sort of said it um, to a mate of mine is, I've got a 16-year-old boy, my son, he idolises me as his hero. Um, no, any dad that has a 16-year-old boy will know where I'm coming from. He doesn't want to copy what I do. He wants to do his own thing. So I doubt that pool of family is, is that great. Um, so with the Tigers, we've been working on him, and I told you this last year as well, um, uh, Michaels, um, we've been working on this for many years, but where I knew it was concrete um, was middle of the part of last year that it was going to happen. Um, and the reason why I felt that is um, just from what I heard from t- my two guys that would know all were telling me exactly the thing, nearly word for word, and I go, okay, great. And that's when I let sleep with you. I said, well, look, I'm going to shoot you off a PM and in our conversation and put it on record just so uh, people don't then accuse me. Because I know I've got a little portion of our board that love to think, oh, I just somehow I must work at the newspaper and know what's getting written before it gets written. That's why I write what I write. Um, yeah. You know, so I just wanted to put that out. And, and it's good I did that. Um, not that I needed any validation from people that are worth a shit, but. Um, it was just good for my own peace of mind. So I did that. And, and so as this year's progressed, Collingwood, uh, and this is the arrogance of the club, um, probably the arrogance of Eddie. But they, look, in fairness to them, 
they had a lot more problems than trying to go after Lynch. They were going to sack their coach. Um, they were copying it, hammer and tong for about two years because they were failing and not making finals and all this sort of stuff. So <clears throat> I seriously believe they just assumed they'll just contact Lynch this year and Lynch will be like, yeah, I want to come to your club and it'll just be nice and easy. They didn't realise the amount of work we had done prior to it. So the recent period where Collingwood um, Collingwood did approach um, Lynch a couple of times, I think two or three times, even could even be more, I don't know. But um, I do know that um, they got told no once, then they got told the second time no. Now, drawing the dots together, I reckon the third time is when Buckley went there with uh, whoever he went with, the list manager and Pendles and probably the leadership group, got told no for a third time, cracked the shits, and then threw him under the bus during um, classifieds. So when he did that, um, because Buckley's not stupid. He's one of the most intelligent blokes I've ever met in football. His football IQ is off the roots. He knew what was going to happen. He just felt like his time was wasted, and that's why he said what he said. Um, and then you've got Eddie the very next day. He went on his radio program and, you know, t- defending Bucks honestly by even, again, throwing Lynch under the bus. And then what happened out of that is there's three agents there targeting, obviously. Um, Lynch's manager would have probably lost his mind and gone to them and go, how can any free agent trust you that you won't shut your mouth when they speak to you? Because everyone does that. Everyone, we meet free agents years before we actually recruit them, you know, 10 to 12 months or 13 months away. Um, no free agent's going to trust you. That's when they realised, oh, shit, this is how it could look. The optics of it wasn't too good. Um, and that's when they did that Monday thing, you know, trying to repair the bridges um, and they sent the list manager, and I think that list manager knows Lynch from when he was in the Gold Coast Sun. So that's the reason why they sent the, uh, the White Dove, someone that he's friendly with anyway, to, you know, try to get the family in a, uh, in a happy place because they were furious. They really burnt their bridges on Lynch there and then. Um, well, they were told no repeated times, but if there was any chance, they burnt it then. So that's why... The, they just went sort of cold, even in the rumour mill. It went from, yeah, it's Collingwood, Collingwood, Collingwood. Then it sort of just like fell off a cliff mm-hmm. as the story got out. So Collingwood's not in the picture. I'd be gobsmacked um, if uh, Lynch does an Adam Trelaw and does a flip. I doubt that will happen because um, we've, we've gone into a few things to make sure this doesn't happen. One, I look at – I don't believe in words overly much. I do believe in actions. And my mate said to me um, eight months ago when I sent you the um, – the message he said to me, Mick, watch the club um, start to extend um, next uh, extend contracts, not re-sign. That's the biggest sign. And, and don't be surprised if we start doing thing that's pro Lynch's family or pro Lynch themselves. So Lynch's sister became in the club. We started extending contracts. You don't have to extend someone that's in contract, particularly if they're in contract for next year, like Jack. There's no reason to, because if we were doing it just in, um, he's having a great year this year. Why extend him in his best year ever? Why not wait till next year when he's another year older and has poor form and then extend him? Yeah. You know, that's a smart business. We've done that before. Why change now? And the reason why we've done that is to shift our payment structure slightly so we can keep who we want to keep um, and we can actually bring in um, a quality player like Lynch. Because, ladies and gentlemen of Tigerland, I hope you're sitting down now. Yep, you're all seated. Great. To the males among you, I just get you to you give you a couple of seconds to unzip your pants. Yep, all right, you unzip. Now, you're nice and comfy. Look at the big picture here, guys. Getting Lynch is not going to hinder the club getting talent. It's going to re- um, help us get more talent. That's all I can tell you now. This, um, I said to Michaels before coming on, there's a few names here. I, I Sometimes with names, I get really, really early. Um, I don't like saying it because I don't want to harm the club. I don't want to give the media any um, leg up that they start digging and it might stuff something up. So watch your space. There's... Um, there's a 24, 36 month game plan here, and Lynch is just the first domino from what I've heard. So um, get excited! I know I am. Lynch will be a, a tiger. It's a categor- done. Categorically, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it's old news now. I'm getting bored about it. it he's he's a tiger. Um, so even, even when you have like his manager and stuff coming out saying, "Oh, there hasn't been a decision yet. He doesn't know." Is that just all for show? Obviously? It's all for managers because it's against the law. He can't. He can't say. If you can't say, oh, yeah, no, Lynch, yeah, Lynch agreed with Richmond 12 months ago. Yeah, Richmond yeah, will get fined. Yeah, all that sort of stuff. So um, uh, one thing, like the only caveat I will get, Hawthorne has gone in balls deep here. Um, not with the dollars that people are saying. It's obviously a little bit less than that. But 
um, they have aggressively tried to um, um, the jump in the party. Um, he has met them. He has to. He's legally bound to. This is the other thing. Why would they? Why would Lynch meet X and X if he's a tiger? Um, you have to meet. Um, Preston met other clubs. You, you can't say no to. Um, you, you would have a stupid player manager saying no to everyone and just leaving one club in it. Even Judd, who didn't want to, um, he had a top short list. Lynch has picked his short list, and they're the ones that he's seen. Um, but yeah, Tigers um, are definitely the one that he's going to go to. Well, that's, well, that's as uh, confident as you're going to get. And I mean, that's a big call, and we've spoken about this many times, but it's a big call to, to come out and state that. But you obviously uh, trust your sources, and from what I know oh. of who you know, that I do as well. So yeah. That's yeah. I mean, hopefully, well, hopefully, nothing catastrophic happens like the Trelaw scenario. Yeah, Trelaw. Like, and look, one day we'll have a sherry, um, and we'll talk about how large my penis is, not as small as um, T- um, Tig's twenty ten. Yes, I got the gag right. I can't believe I buried myself. Oh God, you guys deal with the micro dicks. It just kills me. But we'll have a sherry, we'll have a cigar, and I will tell you the true to true story about Gubby Allen. But I don't want to do it here because we'll probably get um, sued for liable. But yeah, it's um, yeah, we were we were robbed, mate. And I'm I'm wrapped that Adam Trelaw's not our at our club. That's all I'll say about that. But look, seriously, I knew about Lynch even before the media cotton cotton onto it, um, like the Shacky one. Um, it was even right back um back then when I mentioned Lynch as well. So, um, but I, I kept that off the board. So this is the. The name, so I'm more than convinced that it's going to happen, um, and I'll let you know probably towards the end of the year, once I get the okay to release the name about who we're targeting for the following year. Um, also, on this big, um, big-bodied big meet, it's going to happen. Um, it's not C-E-Y, whatever the guy's name is, Yeoman. Um, he's one of the names floating up, but there is a big-bodied mid that we are definitely keen on. Um I, I did. Not... I did laugh when I saw you post that name. I thought he's taking the piss here. Oh, I yeah. look. I have to. I I couldn't help myself. You guys with the micro dick, so I had to throw that name in uh, because <laughs> just to see the reaction. I love it. Um, yeah, yeah. It's, I just put see it's, it's and also too just to see if any media would run with it. Just to so I have a bit of a giggle. But we're definitely going for a big body mid. Um, it was like when I told you guys the last try the draft before Caddy. I said, yeah, it's a big body mid. We're going for that can play forward. If you go through my post, you'll see it. If you could be stuffed, you'll see what I, what the trade targets we were looking for, and we hit them all. So um, I just didn't want to mention Caddy's name because of the nature of it, because um, it was still very much he might not come or he might come. So, um, yeah, no, um, yeah, definitely big body mid, uh, but it might not be this year. It would definitely be next year, if what I'm hearing is right. All right, fair enough. Uh, it That's was... it. And is there that's any before we wrap up? Was there any other names or potential dealings that you wanted to go into? Or that's uh, that's pretty much a wrap, is it? Yeah, yeah. Just to let you guys know, um, in four weeks' time, we'll do another podcast, and that that one will be the juicy one. So um, that would be the juicy one. That's where I'll put out names just for you guys to digest. Um, because what's going to happen is when clubs are out out of finals race, so we've got to wait for the um, the other fourteen teams to um, to drop out of the. Um, no, that's not right. It's not 14. The other 12 teams. What, oh, I can't even math. All right. The other 10 teams to drop out. That's when they will start to really aggressively start throwing names out there. And then as the finals start to wind down, um, a lot of these names that I'm hearing now start to come up or come out. So I'll have, um, let's say before the preliminary final, we could do one. All right. Sounds if you good. Like. I'll, I'll lock it in. I'll pick a date and we'll lock it in. We can do the preliminary final one, and then I can do, no, no. Actually, no. You do a preliminary final, with someone that can doesn't swear as much as I do, and we'll just do a trade <laughs> one. Or I can segue into it. I can give you a trade um, info from what I've heard, and then you can guys talk about you know the game and all that sort of stuff. Whatever oh, trade you want to play. No, it will work something out for sure. All right, Tiger Seventy One. Thanks so much for coming on and sharing the news. Uh, very yep. exciting news, and um, yeah, all things going well. It will be exciting to see Tom Lynch in a Tiger Trumper next year. Yeah, and look, guys, I apologise. I'm not like I don't want to make things up just for a podcast. I've really said a lot. What I've just said now, I've written it for you guys because I do try to be as transparent as I can. But um, yeah, just look, chill, chill, chill out. It lynches ours. Don't stress. Um, ignore what you hear from bosses that might know people in Collingwood. They're just going off the Eddie Maguire effect. Um, yeah, and just look a little tidbit. Just get your VHS out. 
um, and just replay Eddie McGuire's reaction when he knew Adam Trelaw was coming to his club, and just compare him to how he's behaving now. That's the easiest way you can sort of cut the onion, as they say. And Tiggs 2010, mate, you're a, you're a funny bugger, mate. You're a funny bugger. That's all I wanted to say. All right. Fair enough. No worries. Thanks again, Tiger no. like 7. I appreciate it. Take care, buddy. See ya. Bye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Richmond Big Footy Tiger Cast. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and YouTube so you can follow all the roasts and toasts, the reviews and previews, and all topics Richmond. Also keep an ear out for our special episodes of interviews with past players. Go Tigers.